Y'all, lots of days it's just go, go, go. And for those days, we need quick, quick, quick meals. I'm gonna do a hurry up chicken pot pie that'll knock your socks off. I'm gonna be doing a steak dye-in that we can do in about five minutes. I'm gonna be making some wonderful creamy blueberry tarts that take no time. And then I'm gonna prepare some snow peas with orange liqueur. So I'm gonna unload these groceries, catch my breath, and I'll meet y'all back here at the stove. We're gonna do some quick, quick, quick good meals. Hey y'all, come on in. I'm just getting ready to make our first recipe. I have been busy as a cat covering it up today, y'all. You know, it's just one of those days. A perfect world would be if I had like two or three hours to get in the kitchen and prepare my meal. But you know, we don't live in a perfect world, do we? So, I've got Anthony coming in off the boat. I've got Michael coming in off the boat and they're gonna be starving. So I'm doing a quick but delicious hurry up chicken pot pie. Now I've got two boneless skinless chicken breasts that I roasted off in the oven and I'm gonna put them in a greased casserole dish. I've cut them up into bite sized pieces and they look good, they're not overcooked, they're just perfect. Now I've boiled two eggs and I'm just gonna slice these. Whoa, about did it. About did it, y'all. I trimmed my fingernails while I was cutting my eggs. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna slice the boiled eggs, put them down into my dish. And over here on the stove, I'm sauteing off some fresh carrots. Now, if you're in a real, real big hurry, you can always use a canned carrot. because those are really nice and quick. All you have to do is open the can. But these are not gonna take long. You can see they're coming along nicely. All right. I'm gonna give a little salt, a little pepper to this dish. And now I'm gonna layer on a half a cup of English peas or green peas. You can use either one. You can use the frozen kind, the canned kind, or even if you got leftover fresh ones that you've cooked, that'll work great. All right. Now in go our carrots. Ooh, aren't those pretty? They add a lot of color, a lot of nice vitamins, and a lot of nice crunch to our chicken pot pie. All right, now we're gonna need a broth for our pie, aren't we? Well, since I'm in a hurry, I'm gonna use a can of cream of uh, chicken soup, and I'm gonna use one can of chicken broth. And I'm just gonna mix these together. And then I'm gonna pour them over our ingredients. You know, I make a fabulous old-timey country chicken pot pie with a rolled crust and Oh, it is to die for. I used to make it once a week when I was running the bag lady, and everybody looked so forward to that chicken pot pie, but I, I don't have the time today for all of that. So I think this is gonna work out nicely. Now I'm just gonna pour that cream of chicken mixture over that, and it looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, now we're gonna need a crust for our chicken pot pie. We serve this kind of crust on our shepherd's pie at the restaurant, and it really works nicely. I'm gonna use one and a half cups of a biscuit mix. All right, there's one. And a half. And one cup of milk. Now we're putting more liquid than we would if we were making biscuits with it. Because we're gonna pour this, we want it, we want it thin enough that we can pour it. So look how simple that is, that's all ready. Now we're just gonna pour this over our chicken pie ingredients. 
just like that. Okay, I'm gonna just spread that out. And now, the ingredient that's gonna make it so good and so rich, that's one stick of melted butter. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I use a lot of butter, cause I can. <laughs> it's wonderful, I can. All right, now I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 and I'm gonna bake it off about 30 or 35 minutes. And when we come back, I'm gonna have another real quick fix for you. How about steak dying? And later, I'm gonna be making us some scrumptious blueberry tarts. And we have to have a side dish to go along with this steak dying. I'm gonna be making some snow peas in an orange liqueur. See you back. Welcome back, y'all. Today's show is all about quick and easy dishes. Ooh, our chicken pot pies out of the oven, y'all, and it looks real good. I think I'm just gonna come in here. I'm even too busy to put this on a plate today, y'all. I've just snuck some out. Look, you can't even tell. Look, doesn't it look good? You can see where all that butter sunk down in that crust. Mmm. This is really, really good. You know, it's not my old timey chicken pot pie, but for a quick meal, this ain't bad, y'all. In fact, it's pretty dang good. Mmm, really is good. So come on down here. Um, I'm gonna share another quick hurry up recipe with you. Now this is not the authentic steak Diane but it's kind of a facsimile of, a quick version. And uh, I'm gonna start with a half a stick of butter in my skillet. You know, a real steak dying involves cognac and things like that, but we're not going to that much trouble. But it's gonna have the basic flavor that a steak dying has. And did y'all know that Diane was the goddess of the hunt? because back long time ago, you know, people used to, to hunt to grill. In fact, I would almost imagine, y'all, that it was a lot of game, like venison, things like that. It was usually like a, um, a beat more towards the beefy products, which is why we call it Steak Diane, because it's beef. It's a steak, and the steak that I'm gonna use I went to the grocery store and I bought a small little beef tenderloin. It's just one pound, y'all, and I sliced it fairly thin. And I'm just gonna quick cook those so that they don't get overdone. All right, so I've probably got about a half a cup of mushrooms in here, but you know, if you're like us, we really love mushrooms, so you can put as many as you want to in there. I'm just gonna saute those off just a little bit. They're not gonna take much time. And I'm gonna add one clove of garlic that I've just smashed up. And I'm gonna add two tablespoons of diced onions. I'm gonna add a little salt and a little pepper. Okay, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of Worcestershire. And then I'm gonna add about the same amount of lemon juice that I did Worcestershire. Well, maybe I added a little bit more. I like the tartness of the lemon. That looks nice, doesn't it? All right, now I'm just gonna pour that up. 
into my little pitcher. I'm gonna scrape that out real good, get my pan clean. Okay. Now I'm just gonna cover this up so that'll stay warm because I'm gonna get these steaks cooked very, very quickly. I'm gonna add another couple of tablespoons of butter back into my pan. And I'm gonna get my pan kinda hot because I'm gonna quickly cook this steak and it probably won't take but probably two minutes on each side. Okay. I've got a little house seasoning here and I'm just gonna sprinkle that over my meat. Okie doke. Come on pan, let's get hot. I'll add just a little bit of olive oil in that butter. I love those two flavors together. Okay, here we go. In with our meat. This is just gonna be delicious. You know, steak is always in order at our house. There's not one person in my family that doesn't love a good steak. All right. So I'm gonna cook these for maybe, I, you know I don't even think I'm gonna cook them for two minutes. I'm gonna cook them for maybe a minute, but I'm not gonna keep flipping them. I'm gonna flip them one time. I'm gonna make sure they're done. And when we come back, I'm gonna be plating this up for us. Oh, and I got so excited about the steak, I forgot to tell you. I'm gonna be making some creamy blueberry tarts. And that's coming up in just a second. Welcome back, y'all. I'm just in here finishing up another quick, easy dish. Steak Diane. Now, while y'all were gone, I flipped the steak. I finished it off. So now I'm going to take our steak up. Now. You know, you don't have to cut that tenderloin up real thin like I've done. You could slice it into thicker slices. You know, really depending on how many people you're trying to feed. This is nice though. And you can see I've kind of cooked it medium rare. Very, very quickly. All right, now I've got my sauce over here. I'm just gonna dump this back into my pan. And while y'all were gone, I added some fresh parsley to it. So I'm just gonna pour it in there so I can get all those drippings from where the steak cooked. Okay, here we go. I mean, literally, a three minute meal. And it's a nice three minute meal. Gonna, gonna go right for that little piece right there. That one turned out pretty good. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. All right, come on down. Let's go down to the other end of the counter because I wanna share with you the recipe for a creamy blueberry tart. All right, I'm starting with two eight ounce packages of cream cheese that have been out on the counter. They've come to room temperature. Now I'm gonna add one cup of sugar and we're just gonna cream those together. Whoa, doggies. <laughs> that one took off on me. Okay. Now I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla a little bit more. And now I'm gonna beat in two eggs. And that's all it is. We're ready to fill our cups with this wonderful cream cheese mixture. Okay. 
that's done. All right, I have got some, just a regular size muffin tin right here that I've lined with some paper muffin liners. And I've just dropped a vanilla wafer in the bottom of those. That's gonna serve as our crust. You know, how easy can you get a vanilla wafer? All right, now I'm gonna evenly divide this batter among the 12 cups. You wanna make sure they're all about the same size so that they'll cook evenly. All right, so I'm gonna put these in a 350 degree oven. I'm gonna bake them for 20 minutes. And then this is what we'll have at the end of that 20 minutes. Don't those look delicious? All right, now here comes the blueberry because remember, they're creamy blueberry tarts. Now I'm using one can of blueberry pie filling. We don't have to do a thing to it, but spoon it on top of our muffin cups. Doesn't that look delicious? And if you're not wild about blueberries, the pie fillings come in several different flavors. So you can use your favorite. If you like strawberries or if you like cherry, by all means, use your favorite flavoring. I happen to be a big fan of blueberry. Of course, Michael Groover is a fan of anything with sugar in it, so he could care less what's on top, as long as there's something on top. Now, how beautiful are these? Look how pretty that is. Look at that. <laughs> oh, it's red. It's running down. It's running down, y'all. Mmm. Mmm. I love savory and sweet together, y'all. I don't know which is the best. The steak Diane or the creamy blueberry tarts. I've got one more recipe for y'all, though, before it's over today. Snug peas with Grand Meunier. Welcome back, y'all. I'm fixing to share with y'all a recipe that would be fabulous along with that steak Diane. And this recipe was given to me by one of my best friends, Ann Hansen. And the recipe is snow peas with orange liqueur. So I've taken five tablespoons of butter. I'm using one can of sliced water chestnuts. I'm using about two tablespoons of fresh mint. And you can use dried mint if you don't have any. And I'm gonna take a fourth of a cup <laughs> of orange liqueur. <laughs> and in the pan that goes, whoa! <laughs> Look at this, y'all. Okay, now I want, I want y'all to learn from my mistakes that when you're in the kitchen cooking with liquor or liqueurs, you really have to be careful. <laughs> All right, now I have three 10 ounce packages of snow, frozen snow peas that I've cooked in boiling water along with one teaspoon of sugar. In those go, and I'm just gonna toss them until they're heated again. Okay, a little salt, a little fresh ground pepper, Now remember, we're doing hurry up meals today. How hurried is that? Perfect. All right, they're ready. Mmm, doesn't that look good, y'all? Okay. <laughs> Gosh, we've had some really quick meals today, hadn't we? Now it's time to take all this stuff to the table, see what all I prepared, and check. Love y'all, and I send you best dishes. 
from my kitchen to yours. Have a great hurry up day. <laughs>